welcome you here tonight at the October Gallery and to the first UK solo exhibition of Eddie Kamwanga Ilunga. Now, we were very much hoping that Eddie would be able to be with us to celebrate this event and to celebrate with us all the fantastic paintings he produced mainly this year. But unfortunately, his visa has been delayed and he's still waiting at the visa center in Kinshasa to get a visa to the United Kingdom. He did apply about a month ago, but things seem to take that time. Um, I <clears throat> So I'm, I'm very sad to see this, but he has sent us these extraordinary paintings. Um, they are such that the depictions of the Mangretu people in near Kinshasa, and this is a tribe, that, a warrior tribe, um, that whose culture is dying out and whose culture is being eroded by modern technology, um, by, by urban um, computer chips, etc., etc. So he is painting these figures as they're gradually being eroded. And as they're being eroded, the whole bodies are being taken over by these computer chips. So you can see all these white lines taking them over. And also the backgrounds of the landscape have been invaded by computer technology. They're wearing these beautiful cloths that Eddie paints in very much the European tradition of drapery painting. So it's wonderful to have this African textile painted um, with European paintbrush almost. And I think that's what's so amazing in his work is that um, very interesting combination of different cultural modes of painting. Um, the very flat backgrounds um, that almost do not let you enter into the work, but at the same time, the undulations within the textiles um, and the people, very flat, but at the same time voluminous, ingrained in, within their body, the computer chip. Now in the other room, you see hope, you see a baby that's called identity victim who has not yet been taken over by the computer chip. It's still pure sitting in its mother's arms, being embraced by her computer chip's arms, but the body is still pure. So I don't know whether there's hope, but this is Eddie's statement about these particular um, peoples. Uh, we work very closely with um, Gabriela Salgado on promoting the artist's career. Um, Gabriela will say a few words in a moment. Um, she will talk about how he, how she found Eddie um, and how she has discussed with him the various um, cultural artifacts, people, etc. And after Gabriela, very delighted that Eden Goy, who is a cultural researcher based in Paris and London, and who has interviewed Eddie about his work, his thinking, um, will be able to talk about Eddie's thoughts and his environment in Kinshasa. So I'm first of all passing to Gabriela, and Gabriela will pass on to Eden. Thank you. This is a celebration for me because I've been working um, with Eddie Kamanga for the last two years, following his practice and, and having a dialogue with him about where he wants to go with his images and where the inspiration comes from. It's a very complex subject. And what is interesting is, as you can see in the video that he produced for the exhibition, he only produced this video in a few days. This shows you how remarkably driven he is. He's only 24. He's painting very hard. He's made all this in a very short time for this exhibition. But also when I said, look, we really want to show what Kinshasa is like now, because your paintings are not just about the past. This is about the past, the present, and the future. This is a, a, a conglomerate of many times in one image. This is what he's trying to say. He's 24. You know, he's completely embedded in contemporary life. Kinshasa. Kinshasa is a very dynamic cultural center in the world. Many things happen there. In, invention of fashion, invention of music, of dance, you know, it's extremely vibrant. And he's trying to convey that through these images as well. It's not tribal images only. This is about a people he's focusing who come from the past, 
were still alive and he managed to meet and interview, but also the life that is happening around him in a city like Kinshasa, which is the third largest city in Africa. So this is what I was trying to, to do with it. You know, talk about the past, the present, where he wants to go with it. He produced the video for the show. He was expecting to be here tonight to meet you all. I'm very sad he's not. Diplomatic nightmare, you know, we all know about that. We hope he will be here for our talk on Saturday. If not, I will be in conversation with uh, somebody from the gallery who will be, you know, discussing the main things with me. And I really hope that you enjoy the show. And now I want to pass on to uh, Ethan Goy, who interviewed Eddie in my exhibition of his work in Paris last December, and can tell you more about the Congo. Thank you very much for coming. as he told me in Paris, he was messing around with uh, his mobile, he saw the ship, 
and uh, that's actually the genesis of uh, the, the chip that you see, uh, the electronic chip that you see in the scheme. And uh, luckily for him, Vitra uh, told him that uh, it was very important for him to uh, uh, think outside of uh, the niche. And then what happened as an artist, he has to make ends meet. And he had a, a Pakistani patron who actually uh, commissioned him some work, but he told him that he wanted original work. And him, in his thinking and process, he was like, okay, why don't I just uh, add Arabic writings? Yeah. And um, the, the patron uh, loved it. Vitra encouraged him, but the patron told him, you know, you need to come up with something very, very personal. And um, a lot of artists uh, are researchers, and in his own research, he, bumped, he, he actually stumbled into the work of um, a, a, a Congolese linguist, Wambeladio Pai. And what you see here is uh, the, the writing uh, and it's called the uh, Mandombe writing. So uh, that linguist invented actually a writing which is uh, uh, an alternative to uh, Western writings. And also, what you need to understand is uh, DRC being part of the Francophone and more in the Francophone maybe than the Anglophone Africa, we still have that. Um, antagonism between uh, uh, um, uh, the French legacy, intellectual legacy, and promote our uh, traditional value. And also DRC being francophone, but more linked to Belgium than France, so we're not part of that Franco-French Mafia, so we always in the house killed, and uh, and it was it was very it was very important that he came out with uh, the work of Wabelati uh, Pai uh, because then um, as a lot of artists, as he pointed to me, he's always uh, interested to question uh, the heritage of uh, colonialism, uh, the post-colonial period, and uh, what came before. And uh, although he belonged to the Luba tribe, uh, initially he wanted to do research on the Isluba people and then um, I don't know if out of love or chance but he stumbled into uh, the Mangbetu people and uh, what is interesting is though it's not his uh, ethnic group but uh, the tradition the elongated head and different codes that the Belgian fought because what you have to understand uh, in Congo uh, the colonialism was not only a political uh, fight, but colonialism was also um, the encounter and clash between two episteme, two uh, uh, knowledge, uh, the Congolese, traditional Congolese, and also the Western. Uh, to give you an insight of what I'm, doing, uh, I'm trying to allude to, I invite you to look at the work of uh, the photographer Sami Banuji. Uh, the work he did at the Biennale in Venice last year, where basically he juxtaposed the images of uh, the scarification, uh, which are codes of uh, Congolese secret societies and the urban uh, spaces. And uh, basically what he's alluding to is at uh, the, the confrontation and clash between the secret societies from uh, the West and uh, the Congo. And this actually is always uh, in the back of a lot of artists. Now, I feel that what uh, visual artists have, uh, when I think, comparing to, let's say, a musician, uh, is, uh, I think, the codes, the, broad, the, the codes are broader, first, for a start, and also in terms of uh, the, 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 the language is uh, they don't have the constraint of, um, let's say, um, let's say if you write a popular song, uh, there's only so much you can allude to, whereas him as a visual artist, he can easily tap onto people's imagination and play and also instigate personal researches. And um, that's what Eddie Kamanga has done. Um, and also a very important element now, uh, and I think what made him an original uh, voice, uh, I wouldn't say innovative, because it's too early. Uh, an original voice is the process he goes through. Um, and he explained to me that basically what he does first, he takes pictures, uh, he has models, 
uh, is fascinated about uh, the African fabrics because of uh, he has more uh, sisters than uh, no, he only has sisters actually, and his mom. And so he's always been uh, initiated to uh, female mannerism, body language. You can see that in the stance. Uh, and also on the top of that, uh, the fabrics. So what he does, he has a model who pose, and then he take a picture, and then after the, uh, he took the picture, he start now to reflect the chip, the writings, uh, the colors, all that come after. Um, like a lot of artists, they're very mysterious, they don't want to give in too much, but there's one thing he's very adamant uh, about, is that he loves large scale because of the challenge, the physicality, and uh, there's so much parameters that one doesn't control necessarily, and he found it very gratifying. He told me he's incredibly bold doing uh, small, uh, small scale uh, paintings, and um, at the same time, uh, while uh, artistically he's still one of the most exciting artists, I think also what he uh, represents, particularly in the context of Congo, Africa, is the fact that uh, these young artists, basically they are self-made men. No one did anything for them, unlike, let's say, uh, me, I was born in the 70s, so somehow we always benefited from uh, the government subventions, our parents were there, whereas them, they had nothing, so they had to be entrepreneur. These are the same people who had to find collectors, and it was very important for them uh, um, uh, to start to mingle with their fellow uh, artists, uh, African artists, and uh, the Biennale in Dakar, Biennale in Bamako, and the encounter of the likes like uh, Gabriela or the October Gallery or Iman Fares uh, in, uh, in Paris was very instrumental because they provided an alternative that sadly back home we don't have. So on the one hand, they were able actually uh, to have that structure so that they could make and meet. Because what you need to understand is that also the painting, he has the concept, but he has a host of assistants. Um, there's somebody in Belgium doing research on uh, popular paintings. If you look at Sherry Samba paintings, and you look at a lot of popular, uh, popular painters, practitioners, you will see the elements that you find in most paintings, the colors, the patterns. Basically, you have people who are technicians, they actually focus on that. So when the person and the concept, he does the, the, the drawing, there's one person who goes from Sherry Samba Studio, Sherry Shera, Moke, and whatever, and basically he adds the colors and they discuss about the tones. So in other words, the businessmen, because they have an enterprise, they also have to sustain a family, and uh, this is not really easy. Uh, I think one needs to understand also that uh, Kinshasa being a, a megalopole, uh, like a, a lot of uh, big cities, uh, we're very individualist. Uh, it's dog eat dog, it's all about us. It's all about uh, your own uh, ambitions. But however, there is a shift that I've noticed among younger generation, particularly those who belong to AD or Vichua Milambe, is also the need to uh, foster collective. Like, uh, I don't know how many of you are aware of uh, what took place in the 60s in New York uh, or Chicago uh, with the AACM, uh, uh, which was an association for uh, advancement of creative musicians. Uh, the creative collective, uh, which helped the art ensemble of Chicago, Braxton, and all these people to sustain. And interestingly enough, I think uh, we've celebrated last year the 50th uh, anniversary. And unlike the New York counterpart, they were able actually to survive. And I think Congolese artists, they understand that on the one hand, whether you like it or not, the, the government, uh, it will take a long time to get back into their feet, if ever they manage to do so. Uh, they have to develop and foster now a collective. He belongs to a collective called uh, Polo. Uh, he is able to do some work, but Vichua sacrifices a lot. Uh, because uh, somebody has to do the administrative work. So, uh, this 
despite what DRC is going through on the eve of independence, I always believe, uh, like in the work of Eddy, that uh, there's still a lot of hope. Um, what these artists have, unlike the politicians who go to in the 70s in that movement of uh, retour à l'authenticité, is that uh, the artists, maybe because uh, they're closer to uh, earth vibrations, uh, they are actually, um, they trade better uh, the lines between modernity and tradition. Um, they trade better the lines between popular and elitist art. As a matter of fact, this is also something I uh, omitted to mention. Uh, if you look at the paintings of Eddie, comparing to his elders, or even the writers, you don't sense the tension between popular and elitist art. You don't sense the tension between tradition and modernity. Because to these people, French, English, and soon Chinese is an African language. We have appropriated all these codes. And visual artists, particularly in this time of crisis, to me, they represent hope. Uh, unlike musicians who sold their soul to the devil. And particularly now that we need also uh, to reflect, not so much about what the foreign powers did to us, but what we can do to uh, uplift and leave that, uh, to move away from that uh, statue book. I think the likes of Eddie, they invite us to reflect about what we have at hand, and a strong reminder also uh, that um, uh, the, big wealth, the, the biggest uh, wealth of DRC is not so much uh, the natural uh, resources or the uh, mineral strategic, uh, the, the strategic mineral uh, such as coltan and all that, but it's the human potential. Yes. It's the human potential, and uh, I don't know if there are Congolese here. Uh, what I wanted, I want to conclude by saying. Uh, uh, to emulate uh, some African and uh, Congolese uh, uh, politician, Iti Kamwanga Oye, October Gallery Oye, Gabriela Salgado Oye, and you Oye. Gabriela Salgado and Sharon Horton. So, yes, please do come.